Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. My very favorite month is starting soon for me and by the time you see this it will be my favorite month. I love October because everything kind of cools off and we're getting kind of close to Christmas and Thanksgiving and of course Halloween. So we are going to celebrate uh, Halloween with this painting. I think it's going to be fun. It's super duper ultra simple. Um, and all you'll need to paint this super duper cute cat silhouette with the moon and the fence and just, just fun time, um, is to draw it. You just need a pencil with an eraser. Um, you can totally cr use crayons. You can use colored pencils. You can use whatever you want. Um, I am using gouache today and it's acrylic gouache and so I should probably explain what it does. Okay, gouache, regular gouache is like if watercolor and acrylic paint had a baby. It's opaque watercolor, okay? It can be re-wet. Acrylic gouache is like acrylic paint, right? And so it dries waterproof and it acts a little bit like watercolor like it you, you use more water than you do with a, with regular acry acrylic paint um, but it's really close the main difference and why I'm using gouache today and not acrylics is if you saw last week I had a glare issue because acrylic paint is a little bit um, shiny when it dries yeah this is not this has a matte finish kind of like if you use craft paint it's it's that's the only thing it has in common with craft paint. It's way more pigmented and when you put it out on a palette, it's thicker. Um, it's not, it's not like craft paint, but, but it's, it dries with the same finish as craft paint. So we won't have to worry about a glare like we did last week. If you are using acrylic paints, like on canvas or whatever, they, they will work just fine, just the same. There is no reason for you to use gouache. The only reason I'm using it is so we don't have a glare problem. So here are the colors I have. You can use this with any medium that you're, that you're working with. Um, I have white, black, brown. This is burnt umber. Doesn't matter what brown you use. And this is permanent lemon. Um, it's just yellow. <laughs> it is a cool yellow. If you have a choice between yellows, go toward the cool one. If you have one yellow, use that yellow. It's just fine. I promise. Um, I'm going to put some stars in the background. And so I have, I'm using a paint marker. You don't need to, if you don't have a paint marker, you can just use a little brush and make dots. That's perfectly fine. Um, speaking of brushes, I have brushes of a few different types. I might add more, not even use all of these or whatever. Um, I also have a straight edge. That's only to make my fence line straight and you really don't need one. You can totally eyeball it. And then I have water um, palette and um, paper. I'm painting on watercolor paper because generally you, you can paint acrylic gouache on just about anything. You can gesso a canvas and use ac acrylic gouache on it, but I'm just using watercolor paper today. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's get started. This will be a simple one. I'm going to start this with deciding where my fence is. Now I just, uh, this isn't based on any specific painting or anything like that. I am just making it up. Um, I drew it earlier. The traceable is available in the description. If you want to go that route, that's perfectly cool. Um, and the painting you see on the screen, the finished one is the one that I'm doing now. So, um, yeah, that's what it actually looks like. I, I don't know what it looks like quite yet. I just, I just know generally what it's going to look like. So I just drew a line, I'd say about a quarter of the way up from the bottom. And that's just going to be where our fence is. So next is the moon. It's a ginormous circle. If you happen to have something that's the right size to make a circle, that's great. I might with this old, nope, that's too small. I'm going to hand draw it anyway. Let's see. So here's how we're going to draw our circle. I am, you, if you want to do this exactly, I'll show you how to do it. You don't need to do it this way, but this is one way 
that you can do it exactly or almost exactly. You decide where the center is going to be and you draw it a specific length when you know the length, right? So I'm going to go from the half inch point to ah, shoot, two, four and a half inches. I'm drawing pretty light. Okay, it doesn't have to be terrifically light. Yeah, half inch to I go a little bit past. Oh wait, there's the four and a half inch mark. Nothing. Okay, so that is five inches long, right? So what I have to do to get the exact frame for the circle is get this at a right angle. That's four inches. That's not five inches. Nothing. So I need to find, I need to mark the halfway point, which is two inches, right? Okay. So I have that. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm using this T square to get it straight. I am going to draw, let's see, four inches. Let's go down to five. Okay, there's the halfway point for that. Hmm, I want it bigger. So I'm going to take my circle out almost to the edge. So adding about that much. This part I am totally just eyeballing because I want it to come down farther. And that means I'm also, see this is, this is how painting works. Bring that down like that. I want the moon to go just a little bit over the bottom of the fence. So the bottom of the fence is going to actually be right there. Okay. So now to draw my circle, what I'm going to do is I have, I'm going to put little lines here. Okay. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to erase that bit, but here we go. Okay, now here is my plus sign. All I have to do now instead of just trying to draw a big circle is just draw them in quarters. So I just need to make this connect to that in the best circle I can. One nice thing about using opaque paint is you don't have to be as careful as you are with watercolor because when you paint over it, it will go away. It depends on the actual opacity your paint, of course. That's good enough. Actually, it's not. Okay. So just do your best and draw this circle and don't worry if it's not perfect. Mine certainly will not be perfect. And then after I get this done, I'm going to erase all the extra marks that I am in the process of making. Once you're happy enough with your circle, go to your fence line, make sure your, it connects up and make sure your fence line is still there, right? And erase the bottom bit of the moon, just like that. And now we are going to draw the fence. So all I'm doing, and I'm totally eyeballing this, is I'm drawing some vertical lines. They don't need to be perfectly straight. They don't need to be perfectly spaced. Just, and by the way, I'm doing five by seven this time. Um, gouache really is suited, I think, to smaller sizes, but it doesn't matter. You can be doing this any size you want. It does not need to be this size. Okay. There we go. So I don't want just like a plain boring fence. I want it to be a little bit interesting, not, not too interesting, not interesting to make it hard to do. Just, just a little bit interesting. And my fence, my backyard fence has these little things like that, right? Like the boards have these corners cut out. And so I'm going to cut out the corners on my fence just to make it just a little bit 
more interesting, okay? Go. It doesn't matter if you really erase these. I'm going to kind of because it's more if you're using something like gouache, especially if you're trying to do something like watercolor, you definitely want to erase them. I'm being more careful in erasing them over the moon um, just to make my painting job easier and remove hopefully some painting steps, but everything else besides the moon is really dark. So there's my fence. Um, I am also going to get a bigger eraser and I'm going to erase this plus sign before I draw in the cat. There is my moon and now we just have the cat left and we're doing a very simple cat. So let's, I'm going to draw the bottom of him first so I can just kind of gauge the top of him. And I know a lot of um, drawings of, of Halloweeny cats in various situations are really skinny, sometimes like absurdly skinny, but, but we're going to draw a portly cat because portly cats are happy cats and I enjoy happy cats. Uh, as I'm pretty sure you know, I have cats. So I'm going to decide where his body is. It lands about here and it's hanging over the fence a little bit just to show he's sitting there okay and then his body's going to be kind of like an hourglass it's going to come up here and as i said he is a he or she is a portly kitty and don't worry about the sides being exactly the same because it's, kitties are not symmetrical Just do your best and don't stress out about it okay and don't worry about like if you have extra lines in here because we're painting him black so, body comes up like that. I'm doing both sides at once. Okay, it comes out like that, and there are his ears. It's not a particularly scary kitty. Okay. Let's make sure I'm going to straighten this some. Good. Make sure you're happy with the shape of your cat. If you want to draw a skinny cat or scary looking cat or whatever, this is a cat sitting on a fence. Okay. I know it's Halloween. It should be, maybe it should be scary, but I don't know. I don't think black kitties are scary. I like black kitties. Okay. So I'm going to draw his tail and his tail comes up almost his whole height and then kind of curls around like that. It's a skinny tail. Arm is sticking to this palette paper. Goes down. All right. Oops, too skinny. There. Okay, and that is it for the drawing portion of this art club. That's a nice portly kitty. Okay, so to paint him, here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with the moon um, just because it's easier to paint the light color and paint darker colors over it because if you're not using a completely opaque paint, then you'll have to go back and do multiple coats of the light. So we're going to start with the light and then do all the dark over the light. I'm going to get some of my yellow. Now, one thing that I like about gouache, you see that the tubes are smaller, um, is you use less paint, but you also, you're doing it differently with, um, it, it's, it's flatter, it's more watery. I'm, I'm going to have to add more water to this than I would normally to acrylic. Cause like last week and the week before we just had a wee wee bit that I'll have to add a little bit more, but not, not that much. You can paint with this straight, but it'd be very expensive. Okay. So I'm going to get, make sure you can see Where's the top. There it is. Okay. And that's one of my, I, I love this about gouache is that you just don't use that much paint. I'm going to get a little bit of white. Very thick white. Okay. I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to do the moon. I'm not worried about going a little bit over the other lines at all. I do want to get like 
that as erased as possible. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. But, okay. So, all I'm doing with the white, really, because I could just paint it that color. You can, if you want a darker um, moon, a darker yellow moon, that's perfectly fine. And the reason I'm doing this um, is because, let me get a paper towel. Um, the reason I'm doing this is to make that yellow a little bit more opaque. So, I don't have to do multiple coats. Also, I'm lightening it up just a little bit. So, I'm getting some water. You can totally follow along with acrylic paints or you can just color this. It's perfectly fine. So I'm going to get some of this and some white and mix the white in. And again, with this, use more water than you do with acrylic. And that's way more yellow than I think I really needed. I'm going to add a good bit of white to this, a good bit of water. So this is a much smoother paint. This is my favorite kind of paint when I paint for myself. It's usually gouache. Okay, so I have some paint on here and I'm just gonna paint my moon. I'm not worried about going over the lines because everything I'm painting over it is a lot darker than it. So I'm just gonna paint my moon. Okay, here is my moon. And do you see why I wanted to get all those uh, uh, lines done yeah um, all those lines erased because you can still see them I'm gonna dry this really fast um, and then give it one more coat there is my moon hey, one little spot that's gonna bother me but I'm not gonna mess with it anymore um, one disadvantage if you decide you want to um, try gouache it's not the first medium I would recommend to try. Um, it would be acrylic if you've never painted before. Um, the main thing about this is there's, with most colors, there's a big um, color shift between um, wet and dry. Like, and that's something that doesn't really happen with acrylic and why acrylic's easier. With gouache, when you paint dark, it usually dries lighter. And when you paint light, it usually dries darker. I know with a, with watercolor, it's always it dries lighter, and that's just that's just the rule. But this has the, like this weird dual color shift that you really have to get used to. That said, I love gouache. Anyway, so here is the moon. Everything else that we do is going to be darker. So I'm going to get some of my brown. Okay, and I'm going to put. A wee, 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 wee bit of white in my brown. I just got more white because I used it all with the moon. I used a smaller brush. And let's see what this looks like. Hmm. I'm going to add some black to it, too. I don't want it too dark because I want it to stand out from uh, the sky, but and this color shifts it too. That's why, you know, if you, if you add a white and black to something, it doesn't like equal out. It makes it more opaque and it shifts it in color. Let's see, let's see what this looks like. The cool thing about this, that's good. The cool thing about this is that you can always paint over it and that's why I like this paint. Okay, so I'm going to paint the top of this carefully so I can tell where these lines are because we're going to go back and add the lines. Also be a good use for paint markers, but I'm not going to use one for that. So and since we're painting this so dark, I'm not going to be able to see those lines. And this goes over the moon and under the cat. Okay, there is my fence. I'm going to clean my brush. Okay. 
I'm going to go back with this and then just do these little lines in black. Again, if you have a paint marker, this, this is a good time to use it. This is tiny little lines too. I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way and do just lines between there and try not to get my hand on there. I'm not worried about them being perfectly straight. And now I just remembered that I said this went under the cat and then I painted it over the cat. But you know what? That doesn't matter because the cat's going to be black. And we can just paint right over it. Okay. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the sky so it can be drying before we put some stars in. So I just use whatever brush. I'm going to use this black, whatever I can get. It hasn't touched the brown and just paint it black. If you want to add some blue to it, that would make it more interesting. But that is up to you. Okay. There is my sky and I'm going to go ahead and paint my cat black. Now, yeah, I didn't, I'm just going to like paint over the fence where his, uh, rear end is supposed to be. There's my tail. I'm going to go back up. No, but let me do it. Okay. And make that more opaque. Oh, why not right there? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is look over and see if I have any opacity issues with the black. So now I'm going to dry my painting and we will add stars and that will be it. My painting is dry. I'm going to go back. You can totally do this with a paintbrush um, and paint, but I'm going to do it with markers. This marker dries um, like gouache. It dries matte, um, which kind of lets me do it. There are my stars. You can add as many or as few as you want. You can do them in shapes. You can put planets. You can do whatever. It's your painting. You can leave them out totally if you want to. So this is it. This is my painting. Um, I do want to sign it. I wonder how I'm going to do that. I hope some of this brown is still wet, which it is. So I'm going to get some brown. You can sign any color you want. Stick my brush in the wet part of the white. I'm going to get some white. Put it a little bit and I'm going to sign my name in the bottom over here. Always sign your paintings. They are awesome because you made them. Okay. And my favorite part. Slowly peel off the tape. Did you see my cute witch's legs for Halloween? This is washi tape. I love washi tape. It's fun and cute. This is one of my favorite uses for washi tape. You just can't do it with something that's super duper wet. Ooh, this looks so nice. Yes. I love this one. This one's super fun. So thank you for joining me for Art Club. If you painted along, please take a picture and send it into um, the library social media. We love to see what you do. And uh, yeah, this was super duper fun. I will see you next week for the next three weeks. We will be doing one book, one parish themed uh, paintings. So we're going to be doing, this is we, the One Book, One Parish is uh, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which is a fantastic book. And if you haven't read it, you totally should. She also wrote The Night Circus. Um, it's that Both of those novels are just fantastic. And The Starless Sea is totally worth your time to read. Anyway, so three big symbols in that novel are a bee, a key, and a sword. And so that's what we're going to do over the next three weeks. We're going to do a B next week and then a key and then a sword. 
and then comes like the day before Halloween and we'll do something Halloween-y again. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. If you can join me for all three of them, it'll be fun. We can have a little triptych there. It'll be super cool. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I will see you next week. Bye.